All right, everybody, we're going to get started in a, in a couple minutes. We're just letting people trickle in. Um, we've got our guests from Kujira on. We're really excited to talk to them. Um, so, yeah, just give us a couple minutes, let everybody log in, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Waz, how are you doing? You, speaker working and everything? Oh, it's a, it's a beautiful day in sunny Las Vegas, my friend. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, this uh, this Twitter space is going to be pretty historical, wouldn't you agree, uh, Waz, with some of the updates we got? <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say so, man. Uh, we got a lot coming up, and uh, it's kind of exciting to talk about it. Awesome, man. And and Dove, is that uh, – that's you, right? Yeah, Dead Right Dove, of course. Do we have more folks from That's this? me. Awesome. Do we have more folks from your team joining, or is it just going to be you? Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know if the guys, Dan and Brett, who's the crypto slang there, um, I don't know if they requested to speak yet, but yeah, if, if, they, if they haven't, get on it, boys. All right, perfect. Yeah, if uh, whoever's from the Kujira team, if you guys want to just request – um, it's kind of hard to look through all the names right now, but um, if you guys request, we'll approve you and we'll get that going. But why don't we go ahead and kick it off with some regular UMI updates. Uh, so again, thank you everybody for joining this week's episode of uh, Into the UMIverse. We've got a really special guest with uh, Kujira, who's obviously one of the uh, one of the coolest chains out there in terms of like being decentralized and really just having like this grassroots approach. Um, and we've also, I mean, kind of indirectly worked with each other a lot with, um, you know, the, the price feeder that we use to, together. Uh, we also use similar oracles that we um, got from Terra, too. So we'll get into a lot of this stuff. Um, there's a lot of links between the two ecosystems. Obviously, us being a leverage protocol and you guys having your own stable coin. That's where a lot of this stuff is going to come from. Um, but, yeah, we'll get into that in just a minute. want to start with some cool UMI updates. That's why we've got Waz, our uh, engineering lead on Oracle on today. Um, a lot of you folks have, have probably seen some of these tweets regarding small cap uh, collateral options being very hackable. Um, there's, a, there's that guy, uh, a Abraham, um, who was, who's claimed responsibility of the Mango, Mango exploit, right? And if you're, if you're not familiar, the way you do it is basically you take a collateral option, say like USDC, borrow a low cap, say like, um, I don't know, like a ST Juno since there's low liquidity on it. And then you pump ST Juno on, on the uh, price source so that you can basically borrow more. Um, there's also a dump attack that you can do if you dump the price and you borrow all the ST Juno, for example. So the, the, the gist of it, though, is that a lot of these assets that are low market cap and low liquidity are very, very dangerous in terms of like borrowing and lending. And so we're well aware of that because obviously Cosmos being a new ecosystem, almost everything that you, you could dream of is, is pretty low liquidity compared to stuff on ETH. And so for us to be able to support all of these collateral options and all these borrow options as well, all these cool things like USK, for example, we definitely need to harden our Oracle process. Um, that's well aware of, we're well aware of that. And we also need to make sure that we have the ability to block borrows um, or block additional collateral when those exploits happen. And so that's been the major focus of the last week of Uma. It's been really nailing down the risk management part. Um, Waz, I want to give you a chance to speak because we, we've come up with a new uh, sort of product called the Historical. Uh, it's basically a 30-day uh, moving median uh, price feed from the Oracle service so that we can basically track an exploit over the past 30 days and still be able to use those collateral types without being hacked. And so that's the major focus right now. Waz, I'm going to turn it over to you. Just let us know some of the stuff that you've been working on for Oracle and, and why it's going to help with these exploits. Yeah, for sure. So uh, kind of like what you said, Brandon, um, we're working on an, an additional uh, portion of our Oracle module right now that will pretty much stamp the prices um, over X amount of blocks. And then we'll, we're going to provide, uh, you know, keeper functions and eventually, you know, IBC queries on the OHO chain. Uh, we're going to allow for stuff like our leverage protocol to be able to define um, what they want to do and pretty much tell whether or not a, you know, a given price of an asset is within the standard deviation of the median over the last X amount of time. So 
this allows um, not just our protocol, but any other protocol that wants to build something safely to make uh, correct decisions on which price to accept in uh, in different scenarios. Say you don't want to liquidate if you're not within X amount of standard deviations of that median, your protocol will be able to make those decisions based off of uh, just, you know, just going over IBC quick. So, you know, we're, we're building it out for Ubi. Um, eventually it will be its own chain and, you know, it's going to be a service for the interchain. So safety features like this are just, they're just going to come natively on OHO. Um, you know, it's all, it's all DeFi first and all of that comes from bringing this and, and building it from what we've built at UMI and taking that experience and bringing it to the interchain. It's very exciting stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and of course, this, this isn't the only feature we've been talking about, but it's the one that we're actively implementing um, to take care of this so that we can offer all of the Cosmos ecosystem as collateral options and borrow options in the future. Um, because obviously safety first, but also the point of UMI is to enable collateral options with these cool assets anyway. So we definitely want to make sure that we're able to do that in a safe manner. Um, Waz, while, while you're on, do you want to talk about anything else regarding oracles, uh, anything that we can think of um, that's coming up soon? Um, I mean, I, I would just say watch out for ABCI++, what that's going to do to oracles in Cosmos as a whole. Um, I actually replied to a tweet that, that Sonny sent out today talking a bit about it, but it's going to allow for uh, Kujira and Band and Terra all to reduce their transaction bloat. You know, right now we have like two of these Oracle transactions every, you know, X amount of blocks. For us, it's every five blocks you have to have, you know, 200 votes and pre-votes. But, um, you know, once we get ABCI++ there, you know, we can do... Um, a, a lot of cool stuff and it's all going to be serviceable to queries. So just um, look out for that. It's super, super exciting. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for all those updates um, in general uh, things that you can look out for, uh, for UMI outside of Oracle um, just cause that's our major focus this week. Uh, we have a new XLR modal coming out um, so that anyone can basically bridge directly from UMI. Um, that'll be integrated automatically with, the different tokens based on um, which bridge provider we're, we're using. And so to kind of alleviate some of the confusion around that, you know, we have the UMI token currently using Gravity Bridge. Um, if we were to switch to XLR right now, obviously that would pretty much orphan um, all of the Ethereum ERC-20 tokens of UMI that are on like centralized exchanges. So we're going to stick with the Gravity Bridge for now uh, for the UMI token. Um, but the experience in terms of the UI and the UX will be similar across the board in terms of like the Gravity Bridge for UMI, XLR for everything else, IBC as well. So uh, you'll see in the next couple of days, we'll be releasing that um, and it'll be all in integrated u uh, user experience. Um, outside of that, we're working on some cool updates on mobile. Um, we're adding some new features in terms of like information on your on your borrow position, supply positions. We just recently got added to the Kepler mobile app. And so that's a that's a big, uh, huge news for us. We want to be able to be mobile first for the next generation of users. Um, and so we'll be focusing a lot more on, on mobile functionality in the coming weeks as well. But that's it for, for UMI updates. Um, you can, uh, of course, there's also the topic of different collateral options that are coming. That'll That's something you can check out on Commonwealth. Uh, but those won't be available until we get the the historical uh, oracle. God was that's kind of a mouthful to say. <laughs> <laughs> but once we get those safety features in, you're going to see a lot more uh, collateral options, obviously. But safety first, we want to make sure no one's at risk when you're using UMI. So with that being said, um, with those updates done, let's just turn to Kujira. So on uh, the call with us today, we've got Dove um, and we've got a host of folks from the to talk about some integrations that we're working on. Dove, do you want to um, give an intro to yourself and then everyone else from the Kajira team, feel free to just go ahead and introduce yourselves. Yeah, for sure, man. Thanks a lot. And yeah, those updates sound fantastic. We, we definitely need to have a, a really good chat about that um, historical oracle <laughs> that you were mentioning. It is a mouthful. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, so just from our side, um, Kajira, I think, I think by now people kind of know, you know, we came from Terra. 
Um, and we decided to move to a Cosmos Layer 1 blockchain because we started feeling like what we really want to be doing is building um, a safe, secure, and stable uh, DeFi hub, basically. So the chain is, is pretty focused on DeFi, um, and there are going to be other other protocols and, and you know, various other kind of angles that come along. But Kujira we see as really being exactly that, um, a, a safe, secure DeFi hub where you can come along, put your money to work, and put it to work in, you know, with beautiful UX and, you know, fast block speeds and all the rest of it. But much like you guys have mentioned, the focus really is, again, on, on, on the safety aspect and making sure that people can actually come and participate in DeFi and not kind of be overwhelmed by it, all the craziness that tends to go on. But rather, the, the goal here is to, obviously, we've got, a, we've got a, an amazing community. A lot of them came from Terra. A lot are, are sort of new, new, new people in Cosmos. But moving forward, there really is a push for getting everyday users into, into a system that they can trust and a system that kind of works for them. So there's no inflation on the chain. It's, it's, it's a pretty bold move that, that we took early on, but we really believe in it. So that's probably one of the biggest differentiators, I would say, is that we are adamant on building something where any APR that you see is real and it's not going to vanish. You know, it's, it's not going to just kind of disappear in, in a few months when incentives run out and, and all the rest of it. So, yeah, it really is interesting to speak to you guys at, at, at UMI because putting, putting capital to work in, a, in an efficient way really, I think, is the way that things should be going rather than, you know, like um, the idea of there being so much inflation and that kind of thing. So, yeah, really interested to get into this conversation. But in short, Kujira really is a, a DeFi hub. There, there's, a, there's a bunch of protocols about about 10 protocols currently building on the on, on top of the platform. We've got our wallet coming out. So again, hopefully we can chat about that in this talk. You know, we'd love to integrate you guys as well. Um, and yeah, just giving people kind of the experience that they deserve. And then moving moving on from that, so we're going to be focusing largely on uh, payment payment processing and, you know, really becoming a payments platform because we feel like, DeFi really needs to kind of get out there and we don't want, we, we, we just don't want to get into the trap of being in a, in a little bit of a kind of insular bubble within, within the blockchain community. We, we really are wanting to go. And I know you mentioned grassroots, the term grassroots that, that really is our approach. And, and instead of kind of going top down, um, we are, we really want to go bottom up and start with um, allowing vendors and regular users the opportunity to integrate with the blockchain and, and have, and have this kind of um, DIY infrastructure for them at their fingertips and be able to cut out middlemen, especially in countries where um, that's quite hard and very, very expensive and it tends to be corruption and things like that. So that's kind of where we're at now and where we're moving to and the wallets and all these integrations that we're talking about, especially with you guys are going to be, are going to be very key to that. Awesome, man. Uh, Dan and, and Crypto Slang, if you guys want to give some quick intros as well. Sure. Yeah, cool. Oh. Let's go for it, Dan. <laughs> no worries. Um, hey, yeah, I uh, Kujira. Um, uh, the kind of primary things I'm working on at the moment are our uh, venture builder program uh, named Kuji Labs. Um, I'm also, we're also working on kind of some small experiments as it relates to kind of our, our payments infrastructure. So we've begun kind of uh, reaching out and having kind of conversations with different um, kind of small e-commerce stores. Um, so we're working on that. Um, we're, we're also uh, working on getting out our uh, kind of very easy to use liquidation product called Orca. Um, <clears throat> we, um, we, we announced uh, kind of a new liquidity hub called Bo. Uh, that's going to be interesting um, that um, we're, we're getting liquidity for. So uh, we have, um, and then of course, USK, which kind of ties into all of this. So, um, you know, we have a, a, a very large number of initiatives right now. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of just trying to make progress um, kind of slowly but surely on each of them. I'll let, uh, I'll let Brett go ahead. 
Well, Dan, real quick, I just want to ask, just because you mentioned all the projects, Waz knows I'm a bit of a troll, so I have to ask about this, but you didn't mention Sperm Well DeFi, and I, I want to ask about that, because where did that name choice come from? And is that like a core Kuji pros, uh, product? No, it's not. Um, I have no comment on, on the sperm. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> Amazing. Like you want to go? Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Brett. I'm one of the, the founding members of Kajira. Um, and yeah, I do UX, UR design and development. Um, currently working on the, the mobile wallet that, that Stuv mentioned. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's short and sweet and to the point, really. Awesome, man. Well, it's great to have you guys all on. I mean, um, I've been a long time. Well, I should say I'm a recovered lunatic um, from the Terra days. Um, not fully recovered in terms of finances yet, but uh, recovered in terms of mindset. And so I've been using Kujira for a long time now. Um, when you guys were doing your Orca liquidations, I thought you guys had one of the coolest products out there because you, you basically democratized liquidations where, you know, you had something that's so driven by bots and by, you know, these insiders that ultimately take money, not to, to, not to diss the liquidation process because it's a key part of it. But ultimately what you see is you see people that aren't necessarily for the ecosystem profiting from this and taking those profits away from people who are part of your community. And I thought that Orca liquidations really just gave people the opportunity to participate where they couldn't before. So definitely have been a big time supporter of you guys for a long time. And now that you guys have your own chain and, and have your own wallet even that you guys are building out, um, I think it's all really cool. So um, I guess we can get right into the meat and bones is uh, let's talk about USK and, and what it is and what how people can mint it because we definitely want to bring it to uh, Umi as a borrowable asset. Yeah, definitely, Brandon. Like, um, so we, we had a long uh, chat about this. And as you say, things all kind of kicked off with Orca back in the day. Um, and it sort of cemented our ethos, I think, is, is probably the most important thing. Where, as you mentioned, we, we are really, really, really dead set and keen on bringing, I guess, bringing markets to people where they might not have been there before. You know, it, it may not always be the case. For example, of course, we have Finn, you know, we have an order book decks, but we always try to do it in the most capital efficient way. That's, that's really what we're trying to do. Um, having come out of, you know, a, a pretty hairy situation, and I know probably everyone on, the, on this call had a similar um, you know, a similar situation with that. We really kind of wanted to go back to the drawing board and say, you know, okay, what, what, what are the things like? How can we offer people sort of real, real gains, like um, real revenue? Um, and that's kind of stuck with us. So when we built Orca, um, as I mentioned, that kind of cemented our ethos. And that, you know, we have we have our taglines like everyone deserves to be a whale and things like that. What we mean really by that is that everyone deserves access. Um, and that's something that's really um, stuck with us. And it's something, it's kind of our North Star, right? Um, we don't want to just put out products that, you know, maybe we forked something and we're offering something that's maybe unrealistic. We, we believe that there shouldn't really be a line drawn between a business in the real world and a business on the blockchain. Um, and that's something that, that we really, really stand by. I think in the blockchain world, you often kind of get away with, you know, and, and it's great. I, I think th there should be a lot of experiments and we're all trying with, with DeFi in general. Um, there are experiments that need to happen in order to push forward. But I'd like to think we're at a point now after like many, many cycles where we, we sort of feel like there should be a little bit more accountability. Like, you know, are, are you a business? Can you, can you generate revenue? You know, can, like, can you do these things that if, if you went in the Web2 world, and I, I don't want to diverge too much, but it's just I think it's important in the context of where USK will go. If you were in the real world and you went to try and get, say, $50 million of funding for, for a project, you wouldn't even get out the gates unless you actually had a funding model. You could actually literally show people revenue. You, could, you, know, you, could, you, 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 would, you would have to open your books. Um, in my experience, it doesn't really exist that you – that you get offered money unless you can actually show that you can be profitable um, and that you have, you have actually experienced that. And that, that's sort of a little bit uh, topsy turvy in, in, in the, in, in the blockchain space. So just wanted to kind of 
that that's really where we've always come from. So yeah, Orca, we came along, we thought, okay, there, there, there's a massive market. We're talking billions and billions of, of dollars, right? Um, it's, it's huge. And we thought, yeah, as you mentioned, I mean, liquidations are integral, but why should everyday people not be able to participate in, you know, grabbing an asset at a discount, but at this, at the exact same time, actually helping to um, restore some kind of assets on the blockchain, whether it's USK or whether it's any lending market, um, those liquidations are essential in order to make those markets solvent. So that's kind of, that's where we came from. This is something that we really believe in. So when it came to USK, we had a long, hard thought about it, right? We, we thought, you know, do, do we do a lending market, which of course will come. This was just about what we thought about doing first, right? And we thought actually um, a, a native stable coin is, is actually a really capital efficient way of having some kind of lending market. And it gives people a, a stable pegged asset that they can then go off and of course trade in, in, in denominations that they're familiar with, you know, especially the US dollar. Um, so it was something that we gave a lot of thought to and we realized and, and we looked at make a DAO and die and we thought, well, <clears throat> this is a really good way to go, especially as we move forward and more safe and secure assets are, are brought on board. And I'm sure this is, this is where we're going to be able to have some great chats with you guys, because honestly, that, 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 that historical stuff you're doing with, with the oracles is is amazing, and that's and that's kind of where we need to move towards. And I'm really excited that you you said that because, especially in the cosmos, um, that is needed. But we feel like, with our push towards real world payments and uh, decentralized commerce in general, we really do need to have a stable coin in the system. But it also needs to be safe. So those are really the two angles that 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 we have glued together. And that is why we decided to go with that option, even in the, in the aftermath of, you know, of everything that happened. Um, there are tried and proven methods out there. Um, and as long as we are always on top of that, and much like you guys said, always building towards uh, safety and security, we felt like that was a, a good option. So, yeah, USK, we really feel isn't just going to be a way that, oh, great, you know, you've got a stable that's pegged to the dollar so you can go off and, and do some trading. That is, that's definitely helpful, but it, it's, it's going to be a bit more than that for us. We, we feel like we want to go grassroots and be able to give people that kind of experience where they can go along and just kind of tap their phone somewhere, whether you're a vendor or a user or you're on an e-commerce store. You know, we've started, there's websites that have started rolling out USK on, on WooCommerce stores. These are like the ground uh, grassroots <clears throat> aspects that we that we're following at the moment. So yeah, that's kind of like where we came from and our reasoning for for wanting to to push USK in in a safe way. No, that's that's an awesome uh, discourse. Uh, that's an awesome uh, amount of information you gave us there. And you know, I I agree with you a lot on on the things you said, especially. I mean, uh, again, one of my favorite things about it is is how grassroots you guys are. It just seems like every day. You guys are just pumping out new things in Cosmosm, and it's it's pretty inspiring to watch. And you know, with us, you know, Umi is a VC back chain, and um, you know, that's in Cosmos. Maybe that's a dirty word or anything, but I think that the way we can work together is, you know, VC fu funded chains have a lot of funding, and we have the ability to build core infrastructure. And so, if we can build infrastructure that supports the non VC back chains, I think that's a beautiful synergy that that everyone can benefit from. If we can do our part to, you know, support a Cosmos native uh, stable coin. I think that's, that can help both ecosystem, both, both of our chains, but also just the Cosmos ecosystem in general. So that's something we're really looking forward to, man. Um, in terms of integration, Waz, do you want to kind of go into what, what the next steps are on our side in terms of like getting the price feed from Finn and all that good stuff? Yeah, uh, working on bringing over the, the code that you guys wrote into your price feeder into ours for Finn. Um, so, you know, uh, actually connecting to the APIs that you guys have set up that I think, um, calls coin gecko for some of that stuff. And, um, you know, once we, once we release, we, we've got our price feeder V that's, um, going to be released pretty soon, uh, that you guys are going to want to watch out for too, which will allow for, um, you know, coupled with the historical prices that will allow for assets that only have one provider 
to be uh, used as on-chain assets, which is going to be awesome. So then after that, uh, you know, bringing over Finn as a part of the provider, that's just a no-brainer. So, um, you know, all, all these things we have planned, you know, we're not, we're not just planning for um, USK, which, you know, is huge and exciting, but we're also planning for maybe, maybe some liquid staking assets, um, you know, stuff that Brandon's always shilling. Um, and so, you know, it, it's Kujira and we work together, we're kind of working on the same Oracle tech here. Um, so, you know, let's, let's bring each other up in this, in this way and, and continue to do um, these provider implementations together. It's going to be huge, man. Yeah, it was. That's, I mean, that's massive. Um, I, I don't think it can, it, you can't really understate that. I mean, that, that, that really is, um, is a big deal. And, and we've seen that as well. You know, like a lot of people ask us, just for example, like, why don't you use um, Osmo as collateral? And we would love to, we'd, we'd love to, but you, you, you guys know better than anyone, um, uh, w- what a challenge that is. So I think getting that right is going to be just really, really key. And, 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 you know, if it can be done in a safe way, as you guys are mentioning, it's, it's actually going to change the game quite a lot. Um, so I, yeah, I must say I'm super, super excited about that. And yeah, hats off to you guys for tackling that. And, and we are more than happy to, you know, like if, if we can help in any way or whatever, I, I know we, I mean, we've actually, we actually really, w- w- with the Yumi guys, we actually really integrated the, quite a lot in terms of communications. Um, I don't, I, I think you probably, yeah, you're one of two teams that we actually have one of those shared Slack <laughs> connections with. Um, so yeah, just to give everyone an, an idea, um, it's, it's like Akala and, and, and the Yumi guys. And, and th- those are literally the only two teams that we have this proper, like, integrated work environment inside our, our Slack workspaces. So, yeah, um, we, we, we're super pumped and, and, and really happy to, to do whatever we can on our side. And I think, um, like Dan was mentioning, with the introduction of Bo, um, the, you're definitely going to see a lot more liquidity on Finn and um, – the order book is going to be playing really, really nicely. So I think that in conjunction with the tech that you guys are building, it's going to, it's going to mean that there's yeah, basically no way for someone to just game it over a short period of time. So yeah, hats off. Thanks, and that's thanks. the beauty yeah. of that. So go ahead, Waz. No, I, I'm, I'm just saying I'm, I'm excited when we, when we really integrate all these feats into Boho, I'm excited to get you guys on board. <laughs> <laughs> Beauty of open source, guys. I mean, I, I know that like there's been some backlash against forking like open source projects in the ecosystem lately, but this is the whole point of it. Like, Kujira forks Umi's price feeder, and now we have the ability to fork their Fin price feed or their provider from that too. So it's like it's a two way street. We all benefit from working together. So yeah, we're we're really excited to work more with Kujira, obviously. Um, USK, so just to break that down for you guys, USK is going to be something that we focus on in terms of being able to be borrowed from UMI. Um, we've got to work through some safety features, like I mentioned previously, but once everything is safe and sound, we will have that up and running, um, and we'll be looking to integrate with a lot of different Cosmos native stable coins, but obviously we want to go native first. Um, there's a lot of, I mean... Axelar and all these other bridges, they're, they're, they're very safe. They have a lot of safety features, but at the end of the day, it's bridging. And so if we can have a Cosmos native uh, option, that just makes us have so much more peace of mind, especially something built by uh, folks as, as good as Kujira. So definitely something that we're looking forward to. Um, Dove and team, I, I'd love to kind of talk about a, a little bit more of like the other integrations we could be doing, um, especially the wallet. I mean, the wallet, Looks really good. I saw the, um, I think it was like a Figma mock-up of the uh, design of the wallet coming out. Seems like it's really focused on P2P, which is a a really sort of missing aspect, uh, in my personal opinion, of Cosmos. And so, yeah, I'm I'm really excited for that. If you could kind of break down where you're going with that and then um, what like a future integration would look like. Yeah, definitely, man. But just so you know, um, that that preview was actually a a fully live build. it's it, it's really far it's far ahead, um, so yeah that that wasn't Figma that 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 little that, that video was 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 literally a walkthrough of the wallet. We just kind of oh, stuck wow. it in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Like we we you know we just 
like well brett obviously not we uh he stuck it in you know like i, I badgered him for <laughs> for half an hour and i said listen man just i don't want to just upload you know like the, the the actual preview and so yeah the the fact that it was just sitting in that iphone background was really just for for for, for some texture but um yeah it's it, it, it's it's literally working it's it, it's 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 live it's it's making all the calls i think it's largely largely wired up um we're doing a lot of front end stuff of course and you know Brett's working insanely hard at, at just we we really just want this to to be a beautiful experience not for the sake of it but i think it's important right i think i think when you, when you finally get that kind of payments mobile app in your hands that just really 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 does the trick um it goes a long way in terms of you actually wanting to use it and you wanting to interact um and not just that you know like various features like you, you could have seen there you know just kind of being in proximity of someone and being able to pay um you know just j- just things that real world use cases that we can imagine being being really cool so yeah the the wallet is a is obviously a huge it's a huge undertaking but we believe that it's um that that it's something that that really needs to be done properly um and integrations with i mean with you guys honestly the sky is the limit like we we don't really limit ourselves in terms of what we what we think we we could we could achieve or you know what what partners we think we could integrate with and that's kind of the beauty um and uh, you know there was a bit of like weird backlash around um other wallets in the space which is honestly it was a bit just to kind of cover that it's a bit kind of unnecessary like it was me personally on on our twitter accounts and i just kind of answered someone honestly about you know the reasons that we that we building our own wallets and you know the whole thing kind of got a bit blown out of proportion but yeah i, I for what we are looking to do like you say the peer to peer this kind of grassroots payment stuff ultimately basically having a a side chain for payments alone that has faster block times and that is really stripped back and literally only only performs payments you know there's a bunch of reasons that th- this wallet isn't just a wallet right it's it's not just a way to kind of store your your tokens and then send them um we really do feel like it needs to be something much much bigger than that um basically like a payment processor in your in your hands is 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 really where we're going so yeah um as many integrations with great partners like yourselves that we can do with the wallets um, is, is really a no brainer. Really, as, as you mentioned before, Brandon, like in, in the, I think right in the beginning, what you said about, um, you know, just, just kind of giving people that access to the mobile first, uh, the new generation, all that kind of stuff. We've got, you know, Dan, Dan brushed on it, but you know, we've, we've got programs that are reaching out to like literal, you know, students at universities and all the rest of it. So yeah, the the, the wallet is really going to be um, very very key, not just as an as a really nice looking way to you know send your tokens around, but as I say, something something kind of much bigger than that. Um, and yeah, I think that there's plenty plenty room for us to to integrate with with Yumi. And um, I mean, I literally, uh, the, the sky is the limit. I would say because of, if you think about it, these are like key financial services that can actually give you know give people um, a chance get you know let people borrow against certain assets uh let people go off and spend that and 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 you know uh, do stuff in the real world i think i think is is pretty limitless so yeah it's it's going to be a it's going to be a good a good little road no that's awesome and yeah i mean the backlash against creating a wallet is kind of interesting right because you know if cosmos is to really become the internet of blockchains and really become the inter- the interchain you can't just have one wallet like there has to be competition there has to be different providers otherwise things will get stagnant and it's just not good like ethereum itself has multiple major wallets and it's just one ecosystem and so if there's going to be an interchain there has to be uh not just two wallets but many wallets so that you know folks that have different focuses can can have their options like a gen z wallet versus like a boomer wallet cannot be the same experience and so um in some ways it can but you know there's there's got to be different approaches for different users and if we just have one option it's going to get stagnant and so that's why i i agree 100 with you that kujira having a wallet especially focused on the things that you guys are focused on just makes 100 percent sense and honestly i would encourage more wallets in the ecosystem focused on specific users you know like 
right now most most crypto wallets are focused on heavy crypto users but if we want to get that next million users or next billion users of crypto we have to go very consumer friendly we have to go very ease of use and and better ux and especially on the mobile side because the mobile experience right now in my personal opinion is kind of lacking and so more functionality more features more better easier ux those are things that we're focused on and we hope everyone is focused on as well um also, if I could just, yeah, Waz is going to accuse me of shilling because he always does. But one of the most uh, sort of irritating processes for me personally, in terms of like my use of, of Cosmos, has been the fact that there's no really like, there's no one spot to go to stake all of my assets. Like if I want to stake Umi, I'm staking on Kepler. But if I want to stake Chihuahua or like some of my favorite, like smaller cap Cosmos projects, I have to go to Omniflix. I have to go to their website. Like, it's pretty it's pretty fragmented and so that's why i think that what you guys are doing in terms of like just encouraging all chains to integrate is is the way to go that's going to be the way it is on umi like anyone who wants to get on umi can do it it's completely permissionless it's all based on governance just submit your prop and you know there's a vote so permissionless is the way to do it this this sort of gatekeeper approach can get pretty um cumbersome in terms of getting people into the ecosystem yeah, um, that's that's definitely fair. And I, but I just wanted to mention something. So we've we've like um, we have a, a product called Pod um, that you know it literally was like a you know like like a almost like a hobbyist thing that we did on the side. Um, but we are trying to do our best within the ecosystem. So if you go to Pod P O D dot Kujira dot app, um, it may not be you know. Uh, seamless in terms of you just but you're able to go there and literally just switch the um the chain like literally just switch the chain and then you can you can stake um across any uh any of the cosmos chains so we we have been like like you guys you know we've been working super hard on making that really easy but yeah i just wanted to mention that you can just go to one app now pod.kujira.app and um, just like say you've got stars and you've got Kujira and you've got Osmo, it doesn't matter, like any of them, um, well, most of them. Um, and it's not something that, ha- that resides on, K- on Kujira per se. Um, and this is kind of the cool thing, I think, with the Cosmos SDK and the way it's built, um, is that it actually interacts with those chains directly. So, yeah, um, we, are, we, are, we are super big um, believers in trying to make these experiences easier also, that UI does, you know, it can look a bit scary because uh, we, you know, we've got these red bars when, when, when certain validators have 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 a lot of um, a, a high stakes amount. But this is the whole point. So we'd like to think that we are also contributors to this idea of um, uh, higher decentralization, but also ease of use when it comes to, um, you know, h- how you choose to delegate and the ease of which you, you choose to delegate. So, yeah, we'll continue to chip away at these sort of like side projects that that, that are literally just community projects. You know, I don't, that, like they don't, if someone switches away from Kujira, like, you know, there's not even a, like, we, there's, there's, it's not a monetary thing. It's just like a, like a community angle. So, yeah, I think everyone needs to be on board with that, if I'm honest. Um, and, yeah, it's good. It's good, that, it's good that some of us are, I think. No, this is awesome. I didn't know uh, Pod integrated all the other chains. This is really good. Yeah, cheers, man. Yeah, yeah. It's like, as I say, it's it's something we, we, we. Well, I, I don't, I don't want to just say we kind of knocked it up, but between Hunts, Hunts is 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 not available right now. But between him and Brett, you know, they have this like a, we have like a five minute huddle in Slack, and it's like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we do this? And then Brett comes along and like the wallet, not in not not in Figma or anything. <laughs> he just he just shows the UI, and we're like, oh shit, man! Like he just actually dev that, and yeah. So these are yeah, the, the, these are the kind of things that we'll keep doing, and um, I, I think most people that are familiar with Kujira, I think know like how we work. We um, we we do we do work fast, but. This is, I kind of try to reiterate this. We're not working fast just to try and, you know, kind of kill ourselves and, you know, make bad code very quickly. Um, we, I think we've got quite a cool dynamic in that we understand each other pretty quickly and then we go, okay, this is, this is something that would be good. And we're able to, we're, we're lucky to have the team we do and we're able to put it out pretty quickly. But yeah, th- these, are, these are tools that we'll keep on building. Um, and as soon as we see people 
in the community going, hey, you know, we, we, we feel like we need this or that is lacking. Um, but yeah, pod, pod was pretty cool just in terms of people enjoying the, um, the push towards uh, proper decentralization and things like that. But yeah. No, this is, this is awesome, man. I love the, uh, the use of the UI to kind of show like who's above average in terms of voting power to encourage that decentralization. So no, damn, uh, kudos to you guys, man. This is awesome. Um, perfect. So we are at the end of our sort of regular segment. We'll switch to just some uh, audience questions until uh, we run out of those or until we run out of the next, say, 10 minutes. And so I have some written down from our Discord. Um, but if anyone wants to get on and ask a question live, uh, just request to speak. Uh, we'll get you on here and then you can go ahead and ask a question. But the first question from the our Discord is what assets are available to mint USK and are, are, will that be opening up for uh, additional assets in the future? Yeah, cool. Uh, definitely. So I know you mentioned Axelar before um, and the, the kind of safe way that they're bringing assets across. So we are, we are looking at quite a spread. Um, and actually, this is going to probably largely come down to conversations, I assume, that Kujira and Yumi are going to probably have as soon as tomorrow. Um, around the the historical stuff that you're doing with with the oracles, um, but we have uh, Atom at the moment because of course there's 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 multiple price feeds and there's a there's a lot of volume right there's there's I mean Binance does I'm, I can't remember the figure it's it's sort of thirty to forty million a day maybe so you know and and in multiple price feeds and stuff like that so. Atom is something obviously very, very Cosmos central that we felt would be the best way to kick off. So that's what we have right now. And then we have Dots via Moonbee. Um, and this is, I don't want it because I know we have a limited time, but the, the partners that we've chosen to take on these bridged collateral assets have been extremely vetted. Um, but so there's Dots. And then coming up will be Nomic Bitcoin. Um, we, we, we really, really believe in the way that they are doing this stuff. We've literally looked at their contracts. We've, we've, we've had in-depth um, conversations and we believe that what they're doing is really solid. And then there's going to be Ethereum via Axelar. And as I say, I mean, the, I think what, with what you guys are doing, probably um, the sky is the limit in a way. We want to spread out the risk. We want to spread out the collateral. All of that makes sense. So yeah, the the the, the kind of short answer is that it's Atom and Dot right now, and the more Cosmos, um, of course, uh, options we can have would be amazing. And I think yeah, as I say, our work with 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 you guys is going to be instrumental in that. You know, I'll throw it out there just to show Umi a little bit, but you know, there's an interesting sort of integration of our U tokens with a minting process for a, like a stable coin in that, you know, our U tokens are basically if someone supplies a, a collateral asset um, or any asset, just that they're lending. And so they're constantly appreciating. And so if you have an appreciating asset as your minting um, asset, it's kind of a safer process than if you just had a, a regular native asset, but just throwing it out there, Dove, we can talk more about that later. Um, we've got Crypto OT, uh, who's requesting to speak. I'm going to add you right now. Um, I see Nam in your name, so I, I hope you're vetted um, because you like Namic. But uh, let's see what your question is. Hello. Thank you guys for this uh, space. I actually have a question. If you guys have any plan to support the Ledger hardware, I mean, just like an app and you just use it. Um, for Umi, we're fully supporting Ledger. Um, and we're also on... Uh, we're on the latest version of the SDK 046, so everything works with Ledger in terms of like Auth Z, um, and we also try to make everything backwards compatible with Amino. I know that's an issue with some projects in the ecosystem, but Dove, do you want to answer that on uh, like all your stuff too? Yeah, pretty much the same. Um, exactly when it comes to the wallets and and all those good things. Um, yeah, definitely a huge. Uh, the, so the the reason why we went with a with a with a fully native literally mobile only wallets, uh, at least for now, I don't want to say that we might not have an extension, but, you know, we want this to feel like, you know, if, if you go into your bank and <laughs> you, you have a transaction, it's like the, the security is residing on your, um, on your mobile. But yeah, um, exactly like Brandon said, um, very much 
um, supporting that. And it, it's what we use day to day. So yeah, we, we, we have a, we have a good use case. Thank you guys. Awesome, man. Thanks for the good question. Um, we also have uh, another person, uh, Bertulli. No Namek in your name, so I'm hoping you're, you're not spamming, but no, just kidding. Bertulli, uh, go ahead and ask your question. Hola. My, oh, Bertulli, are you able to speak? Maybe not. Um, that's fine. I've got another question um, from our Discord. Um, Bertulli, if you, if you figure out the mic situation, if you unmute, uh, feel free to jump in and interrupt me at any time. But um, another question from our Discord is when Orca on Umi? So liquidations uh, through Orca. That's that's a pretty cool one. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's actually a pretty cool one. So on the Umi side, I'll give you a little background. So some of the uh, hottest topics in Cosmos right now are around like protocol owned MEV. And so we've been looking into that as well. And, and, and the idea is, you know, can we make liquidations in house, especially with a protocol like Orca, so that we don't have sort of this value discrepancy between people who are liquidating and people who are getting liquidated. Um, the idea there is, you know, liquidations suck. Like we don't want to liquidate people. We want people's money. To, we want their bags to grow. They want, we want them to moon. And obviously that helps Umi in the long run. Liquidations don't help us because it hurts our users. Um, but it's a safety feature that's very necessary so that Umi doesn't deal with, you know, bad debt. And so the idea there is can we make a liquidation process that sort of funnels the uh, liquidation uh, priority to the protocol itself? And that way the protocol can own that liquidation process. And so say, for example, we do have liquidations, maybe we can have some liquidation insurance. So maybe we, t we say, okay, we take the liquidation profit and we send it back, like, like we send 10% back to people who get liquidated, just as like, a nice liquidation insurance. There's also hedging that's available. Say you want to hedge your bets on, on the market, you can use that through liquidations. But ultimately, I say all that to say we're, we're investigating how to best handle liquidations going forward. And then what that will allow us to do, especially once we get Cosmwasm going, is integrate with a, with a protocol like Orca so that we can have them be the liquidation hub, democratize that so that anyone can participate in that too. So Definitely. Uh, Dove, any any thoughts on Orca coming to Umi in general? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It's, it's as you mentioned, it, it's not um, necessarily possible right now, but it sounds like you guys are moving in the right direction. I guess just one, one thing that I wanted to add on top of that is that the way, um, and I, I just want to say it because I'm not sure that many people know this, but the way that the mechanism works in Orca is that you can, um, well, you, you have to set um, a threshold for, for, for bids. And what that means is, let's say, for example, you have a market. It doesn't matter what market it is, but there's some kind of lending market going on on Yumi um, with some assets. And there's some, whether it's a stable coin or something else, um, that, that is required to, to, you know, to draw down those loans or to, or to make them solvent again. Um, what you have is a bid threshold that you set. So let's say, for example, you set that at $50,000 worth of assets that need to be within the Orca liquidation queue um, in order to have the human first elements. So let's say, you know, all is, all is going well and there's whatever, five or $10 million worth of bids within that queue within within the orca interface if you just want to look at it graphically um and then you know maybe there's a really really big dump and a big wipeout of some kind of asset what happens is once that once uh, the, the the value of the capital inside orca goes below that bid threshold of let's say 50k at that point the bots are able to come in and just do their usual homework so I guess that's just something I wanted to add to what Brandon was saying because um, it's important for people to understand that the Orca setup isn't just like, oh, you know, you have um, the community placing bids and then it, it, if, if those run out, then everything is, 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 is gone to the wild. That isn't the case. So, but yeah, Brandon, I mean, something that I think our teams can 
really discuss and perfect um, along the way. And um, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure that that bid threshold thing was covered because there there, there is that fail safe, that kind of pin that you can pull. Um, and then those bots will obviously because they're bots, right? They 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 they're there to make profit. They're not going to not do that. They're gonna <laughs> they're gonna do that whenever they presented the opportunity. So yeah. No, that's a great point. And um, yeah, it was something that we're really excited for. Because obviously, like I mentioned, liquidation suck. We're not here to liquidate anyone. That's not the point of UMI, but it's a fail safe that, that is necessary. So definitely it's something that we're thinking about and something that we want to make sort of, uh, we want to kind of change the connotation of a liquidation so that it's not just hurting people. It's actually bringing some of that value back to our users as well. So if we can do that with, yeah. with Kira, then we definitely want to you know make those moves. Yeah, so I, I don't want to, uh, just a quick point on that. Like, that's something that we saw and something that it took a little bit of time for people to realize. It, it, literally, as you just said, we are not, what people need to realize is, whether it's Yumi or Kujira, we are not literally liquidating people. Like, we are offering um, a way to benefit from liquidations that are literally inevitable, given given certain conditions. So, and I think I think you'll probably agree, Brandon. Like that's that's the approach, as you just mentioned. Now, this isn't about like if if if, if there's a liquidation price on your loan and it goes below, do you want to perhaps be able to hedge your hedge your own um, uh, loan, as it were, and and actually, you know, you could you in a way you could almost liquidate yourself, and and pe- people have done that, right? So. Um, yeah, I think it. I think it just gives a lot more transparency. It gives a lot more open, uh, openness, and yeah, I think the way to go is offer that same community that are taking out the loans the opportunity to um, to bid on to bid on the bad ones, basically. So yeah, n- none of us in this chat are, are you know running around with daggers like liquidating people. That's that's just kind of a, a mechanic. Um, the idea is that we can. Uh, be fair with how those assets are distributed afterwards. And if I can bring it all together, um, if we have this marketplace for liquidations where folks can provide funds and you can openly see that, you could honestly tie that back to the Oracle was and you can have a metric saying, you know, like they do this in, in just the overall financial system of, okay, well, how many people are shorting something? Like what is the sentiment? You can really turn the Oracle into a sentiment analysis tool as well with these liquidations being public, too. So definitely, these are all things we want to we want to explore. And I think we've we've kind of run out of time. So I want to give everybody a chance to, you know, get any last thoughts out there. She'll she'll any product you guys want from the Kajira side. Dove, Dan, Crypto Slang, if you guys want to just uh, any final thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I but I don't want to speak for Dan and um, I know Brett doesn't mind me, you know, just kind of fronting this, but um, I think that, no, not, not really. I think we've, this has been really, really beneficial. And just to keep it quick, I think that Kujira bow um, when it comes to liquidity is something that from our side, I'd love you guys to look out for. And the reason I'm saying that is because I think it's going to tie back into everything we just mentioned about security, about oracles, about all that stuff. Because when when you have much more liquidity coming through the books and a, and a fairer trading system, um, I think that in the context of the conversation we're having now, it's going to be a very, very important thing. So, yeah, don't, don't want to really show too much. I guess just hats off to everyone building on Kujira. Hats off to to Yumi. We 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 really like we genuinely can't wait to um to to work more with you guys and integrate more. Um fantastic product. You guys have been around the block, you've been there um for a long time, I know. Um and you guys are yeah, you're doing the Lord's work. So thank thank you for this call mainly and uh yeah, we just can't wait. Awesome, man. Thank thank you for the kind words. And Dan and Brett, do you guys have anything you guys want to add? Nothing from my side, really. I think that has covered it pretty well. Um, yeah, just to echo sentiment, you know, thanks for having us. And yeah, it's good, good to chat with you guys and, and pretty keen to, to chat some more on Slack and see how we can work together to make some awesome stuff. Absolutely, man. Um, we're looking forward to it. And obviously, um, we want to commit, we want to bring as much value to the Cosmos ecosystem as we can to Kujira, to Umi, to everybody, really. So, 
thanks for everybody that that joined us today um a lot of folks on on this one and it was a long one but i think a lot of great information so thanks to everybody for joining uh we'll see you next week uh we're working on some cool guests for that as well uh but lots lots more to share next week but thanks everyone again uh, and have a great rest of your day